Hi, second grade. So for our read aloud today, I thought I would switch it up from Lulu a little bit because I want to read you this story. It's called the Matchbook Diary, Matchbox Diary, sorry. And Miss Wendy sent a copy of this home with everyone. But I know that she sent it home last Friday and there were a lot of people not at school that day. So I know not everyone has this book, but I wanted everyone to get the chance to hear the story because it's a really nice story. So if you have the book, if you want to follow along in your copy, you can. If you want to just listen to me, that's fine too. But if you don't have the book, I wanted to give you a chance to hear the story. So I'm going to read it for everyone today. So this book is called The Matchbox Diary. And it is by Paul Fleischman, which is interesting because we know another Fleischman from Lulu. All right. Pick whatever you like the most, then I'll tell you its story. There's so many things here. You'll know when you see it, and then I'll know something about you. The great-granddaughter I've only heard about. So, you like boxes, just like me. You smoke cigars? No. Me either. There's no cigars in it anyway. What's inside? Not just one story, but lots. What's in the little boxes? My diary. What's a diary? A way to remember what happens to you. Usually it's a book people write in. When I was your age, I had a lot I wanted to remember, but I couldn't read or write. So I started this. Open the first one. What is it? An olive pit. I put it in my palm and I'm right back in Italy. That's where I grew up. Lots of olive trees there. Life was hard. The other reason I saved it. No floor in our house, just dirt. No heat in winter except the fire under the cooking pot. And sometimes not enough food. When I'd tell my mother I was hungry, she'd give me an olive pit to suck on. It helped. First box has an olive pit. Who's this? My father. He went to America to work. He sent money home. Lots of Italian men did. I was a baby when he left. All I remembered about him was his mustache. Once he sent pictures so we wouldn't forget him. My father never went to school. Back then, most kids had to help their parents all day. He had to get someone to write his letters home from America. When one came, we had a problem. Four older sisters, my mother and me. None of us could read. We had to take it to the schoolmaster. He had a son older than me who could read and write. So this is his father. Every day that boy wrote down what happened in the diary. Every year he got a new one. Red leather with a silk bookmark. I had no idea how to write, but I was wild to have my own diary. I want one too. That's my girl. The great-grandfather wanted a diary, but he couldn't read or write in one, so he couldn't have a normal diary. There was a year with no rain, no wheat, no macaroni. The schoolmaster wrote a letter to my father for us. We waited. A long time later, a letter came back with tickets to sail to America. When we left, my grandmother cried in the road. You'll eat the food there and forget your home. Over and over
going to America to be with his dad, but the grandma is sad that they're leaving. We took a horse-drawn carriage to Naples. It was the first time I'd seen a car, and drinks in bottles, and the ocean. We slept three nights on the floor in the steamship station, waiting for our boat. That's where I found the matchboxes. I told my grandmother I wouldn't forget her or anything else. That's when I started the diary. This is the great-grandfather as a little boy. And he's going to start a diary with matchboxes. Our ship left. We were in the bottom, where the motion was worse. People seasick, moaning. My sisters took me up on deck. You like that hairpin? When I found it, I looked up, and high above us were rich ladies in big hats on the upper decks. People said there was gold lying on the ground in America. I thought my mother and sisters would look like those women soon. These are the hairpins. And you can see there on the bottom decks and all the rich people are up on the top. We were headed for Ellis Island in New York. Someone told me that men would stick button hooks in our eyes there. What's a button hook? A metal tool for closing up shoes before there were laces. I had nightmares about the button hook men. Then we had bigger problems. A storm hit us, maybe a hurricane. The boat bucked like a horse. It's going up and down, back and forth. I saw a bunch of sailors praying together. Not good. St. Christopher is supposed to protect travelers. People threw medallions of him in the ocean, begging him to spare us. After three days, the water calmed. So this is a medallion of St. Christopher that he was just talking about. How long did it take you to fly across the country? Five hours? That trip from Italy took 19 days. I know because I put a sunflower seed shell in this box every morning. Then everyone was calling, La Statua della Libertà, the Statue of Liberty. I ran up to the deck. There was New York. A boat came up to ours selling food. Our neighbors on the ship bought bananas and gave my family one. I bit into it and spat it out. I didn't know you're supposed to peel it. About the Statue of Liberty. That's the first thing they see when they get to America. How come this one's empty? I'll tell you why. We got off on Ellis Island. They didn't want to let in anybody sick, especially people with eye diseases. All morning I'd been crying because of the button hook man. When I saw him, I screamed. He grabbed me and used the handle to roll up my eyelid and look underneath. Red, he said. He can't come in. My mother fainted. My oldest sister found a doctor who spoke Italian and told him my eyes were red from crying. She gave me peppermint candies to calm me down. Later, a new doctor checked me, using his finger. That one let me pass. I put a candy in the box. Then the next week, I ate it. So there's nothing in this box because he ate the candy. But you can see, so when people came to America, they didn't want to let anyone in who was sick because they didn't want them to get other people sick. So they had to check them when they got here. They would look under their eyes using that tool that he was talking about, a button hook. And since his eyes were red from crying, they weren't going to let him in. But then they realized that he wasn't sick, it was just from crying, so he was okay. My father met us. Everyone cried. I smelled his mustache to see if it was really him. We took a boat to New York, then a train somewhere else. The next day, we started work in the Canaries. 
all seven of us. Cutting fish all day, always a man watching to make sure we weren't slowing down. They gave us old, falling-apart sheds to live in, as crowded as the ship. You didn't have your own room? No, sweetheart. They are finally back together with their dad. But they had hard work and not good living conditions. Canning fish, sorting peaches, shelling peas, then down to the south, peeling shrimp and opening oyster shells, wherever there was work. We moved so often I could barely remember where I was or where I'd been. That's why I started saving bits of newspapers, so that someday I could look back and say I was in that exact place on that exact day. I still love newspapers. So you save those newspaper scraps to keep track of all the places they lived. Instead of jewels, my mother and sisters had fish scales on their arms. The strange thing was, when we walked down a street and maybe passed a grocery, the same people who bought our cans of sardines wouldn't look at us. Back then, some people didn't want Italians here. Sometimes boys threw rocks. That's how my tooth got here. So people were not always nice to the people who came to the country. And the great-grandfather even got his tooth knocked out by someone throwing a rock at him. That's my favorite box. My first baseball game. I didn't understand it, why the men were running. But I was in heaven not to be working and to sit by my father. Under the grandstands, I found more matchboxes. Then, in a clump of grass, a quarter. That meant we could go again. To me, it seemed like one of the lumps of gold people said we'd find. I think I was eight when we got an apartment and all rolled cigars at the kitchen table. A few years later, we switched to shelling nuts for restaurants, day and night. Then my father got hired at a foundry in Pittsburgh, making railroad parts. My sister sewed in a factory. My mother told my father I should go to school. She'd seen me staring at signs and circus posters, trying to understand. Sometimes I'd draw letters with a piece of coal. She wanted me to learn and teach my sisters. Big argument. Days and weeks. So remember, a lot of kids at this time couldn't go to school because they had to work. They had to help their families make money. Who won the argument? I'll give you a hint. I went to school. It was hard. English seemed as crazy as a baseball. I had to sit with the little kids. They made fun of how I talked, but I learned to read and write. What they taught us during the day, I taught my sisters that night. Then I went to a different school where I learned typesetting, picking out the lead letters from their compartments. That's how everything was printed before computers. I had good eyes from always looking for little things from my matchboxes. I became a printer. So before typing on computers, they would use these kind of like stamps, letter stamps, to print things. They had to go one letter at a time. Did you stop the Matchbox Diary? In a way, I never did. After 30 years of printing, I opened a bookshop. Books are like newspapers. They show where you've been. Then I bought and sold antiques. Old things that people had saved for years, filled with stories. Other people's diaries. I wish I could write a diary. Did you go to school yet? To kindergarten. Lucky girl. You'll be writing before you know it. Till then, I'll bet you're a good collector, like me. Is 
copy and she is collecting some things of her own. So if you and your parents are looking for a project to work on, maybe you can start collecting some things, some things of yours, maybe some things of your parents. It doesn't have to be in matchboxes like this, but maybe you could start putting together your own sort of diary. It doesn't have to be a written one, but it can be things that remind you of places you've been, people you've met, things you love. And then just like the great grandfather, you can use it to tell stories. It would be really cool. And we could maybe all share them if we work on them. I'd love to see what you can put together. But I will read something else to you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day, second grade.